what has happened in the past, what God did to bring about the restoration and the redemption of mankind. This is the history of the world. His story. One story. God bless you. Welcome this morning. You know God has a word for your life. I believe with all of my heart. In fact, you know, there, 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 there's someone that is just, whether you're sitting here or whether you're watching or, or whenever you may be watching, there's someone that has really been thinking about death. I mean, really been considering death as an alternative uh, by choice. Uh, uh, okay, listen to me now, okay? If life has put you in a hole or a situation or circumstance to where, you know, um, your future looks bleak and, and uh, you know, you just don't want to face whatever it is that you are expecting to have to face and you've been considering death as a choice, an alternative, okay? Listen to me. I have a word from God for you. Stop it. Okay? Stop it. God is the author of your life. There will come a day when death will be God's will for your life. But it, it, it will not be because life is piling up on you. It will not be because some enemy has pushed you into a deep, dark hole or you have made some mistake or, or facing some moment that just seems uh, like you know, it's insurmountable. That's not the truth, okay? So just open up your heart. And in fact, let me just pray for you right now. Let me just pray a word of deliverance. God would not just speak that to, to, to me and... and uh, you know, uh, leave you hanging here, okay? Let's just take that away right now. Father, Lord, I just thank you, Father, that, that the spoken word, Lord, you know, just blows like a wind, Father, uh, upon uh, depression, oppression, worry, and fear, anxiety, Lord, upon uh, any, any spirit of death, Lord, or, or a suicide, Lord. God, I just speak to it in the name of Jesus. You go, you leave, no more. R uprooted, no more in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Father, Lord, for great grace, for hope, for expectancy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, if that was you and you feel free, uh, you just let me know uh, later that was you, and uh, it will encourage me to keep on giving the word of the Lord. I can tell you, uh, God is in the setting free business. Amen. Amen. He has a history of setting people free. Turn and tell somebody God's got a history. Well, today we're going to talk about history. In fact, you may not know exactly what history is, so I looked it up. I looked up a definition of history this week, and uh, uh, listen to this. History is the study of the past. Isn't that interesting? History is the study of the past, particularly how it relates to humans. Now, I found that as an interesting definition. History is the study of the past, particularly how it relates to humans. Now, uh, uh, someone asked not long ago, uh, someone at, 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 a, uh, at, at, at a place where Brenda gets her hair cut, someone asked, uh, is there any history that supports the Bible? This is the history. History is a record of accounts of the past. History is the study of that record of the past of the accounts. This is a history book. Hello? And it's not, does science support the Bible, the truth would better be revealed, does the Bible support your science? That's the truth. 
I mean, my goodness, people used to think the world was flat. All they had to do is read the Bible. On and on and on. This is history, okay? This is history. The Bible is the greatest and the most authentic, most reliable accounts of history and how the past relates to humans. So believe me when I tell you that this collection of letters and this collection of books and this collection of eyewitness accounts and this collection of stories that were handed down from generation to generation to generation constitutes the greatest history book that the world has ever known. History. History is nothing more than his story. His story. Let me encapsulate his story for just a moment. Listen to me, if you would, about his story. In the beginning, God created and ordered the heavens and the earth. You can read about it in his story. God made Adam in his own image. And then God fashioned Eve from Adam's rib to be Adam's wife and to be the mother of all mankind. The devil tempted Eve to disobey God's word and this resulted in sin and sin caused mankind to be separated from God. God swore to punish the devil for this deed of deceiving Eve. And God offered a way for man to be forgiven and to be restored to a right relationship with Him. God chose a man in every generation that through this man and through his descendants, God would work to bring about salvation for all mankind. For 4,000 years after the creation of Adam, God worked His plan of redemption. God promised that a Savior would come, and this Savior would destroy the works of the devil once and for all. During this interim time, for the first 4,000 years, under the umbrella of God's promise, during this interim time, God granted special provisions for the temporary relief of the effects of sin. God allowed the sacrifices of bulls and goats to temporarily cover sin in a person's life. Inspired by the Spirit of God, prophets of old spoke the word of the Lord and foretold of a Messiah that would come. He would be born of a virgin in the town of Bethlehem and he would take away the sins of the world. This Messiah was to be called Emmanuel, God with us. This Messiah would be both the Lamb of God and the king of Israel, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He would be offered as a pure sacrifice, and then he would be raised from the dead as the king of kings and the Lord of lords eternal. 2,000 years ago, those prophecies foretold came to pass when the virgin Mary from the town of Nazareth, brought forth her firstborn child, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger in the town of Bethlehem in accordance with the prophecies to be fulfilled. He is the Son of God and the Son of Man, Almighty God incarnate, God in the flesh. 
this Jesus of Nazareth lived a sinless life. He died an atoning death. He was buried in a tomb in the earth. And then on the third day, he was raised from the dead, victorious over sin, death, hell, and the grave. He made a show of the devil openly. He bruised his head and took from him the very keys of death and hell. This Jesus, victorious after his resurrection, appeared to more than 500 people who gave witness and gave testimony concerning his resurrection from the dead. And as he ascended into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father, there to make intercession for you and for me, he gave a great commission to all who would believe upon his name. He said, go into all the world in every generation and proclaim the good news. This gospel being proclaimed is a draw, is a calling for all men to come and be saved. He said that all who would believe would be born again. The followers of Jesus were all filled with the Holy Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost. And with boldness they began to proclaim the word of God. And this gospel was proclaimed in that generation throughout Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria and ultimately to the uttermost parts of the world. These followers of Jesus established churches in their home communities and took this message and raised up churches around the world. They passed this message on to the next generation and generation after generation after generation since that time has believed the message and continued to establish churches around the world. Throughout history, beginning with Moses and ending with the Apostle John, God ordained and inspired men to record, compile, and preserve His Word for all generations to come. Today we have this Word of God The Holy Bible is that record written by the hand of men inspired by the Spirit of God. The Creator of the universe has not left us without witness. This is His story. This is one story. His story. This is the history of the world. We are told that it is the most read, the most copied, the most recorded, the most preached, the most proclaimed, the most practiced, and the most repeated story ever told to mankind. It is the history, the unbridled truth, the truth of Almighty God, what has happened in the past, what God did to bring about the restoration and the redemption of mankind. This is the history of the world. His story. One story. It is the most repeated story. The most believed story the world has ever known. More People believe this history, and it is more provable than any other history. 
Men have tried to suppress this. And even today, they speak falsehoods. And they breed a contempt for this history, which does nothing but bring hope to mankind, but to bring healing to mankind, but to offer peace to a world and an eternity that is filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. This history offers nothing but good to mankind, and yet the devil and his angels and the spirit of this age tries its best to stomp it to ashes, to bring about some disrespect and some deceptive disregard to the word of Almighty God, which has been proven through the ages, which no other history book can make such claims as to give eyewitness accounts to the creation and uh, passed down from generation to generation they're solidly handed to man after man after man and recorded in the annals of the history of the world those things which God has done for his people this book is true only someone who had some ulterior motive could ever bring disrespect to such a word. What motives could there be but those who desire to live outside of the confines of the respect of this word, to deny a God, a creator, who is written in every cell of your body, your history, your DNA, contained in such code that we can barely understand, passed from generation to generation, has given us by intelligent design a life to live and an eternity in which to embrace. It is the truth that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. We love God because He first loved us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were separated from God, while we were eternally doomed and damned to an eternity without Him, God sent His Son to die for us, the ungodly. We love Him because He loved us first. Jesus is today seated at the right hand of the Father God. Jesus is interceding for you and for me and for this world. Jesus is waiting until the time which has been appointed by the Father, the time in which God will say to His Son, the victorious King of kings and Lord of lords, arise and go and bring your your, your bride, your family, the church, bring the saved, bring the believers, bring all those who have followed you. Go and bring our family home to us. And in that day, a trumpet shall sound, and the dead who have believed in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we which are alive and remaining, we shall be changed in an instant in the twinkling of an eye, and this corruption shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, and in that moment the reality of the truth of God's Word will be understood that death shall be swallowed up in victory. Oh, death! Where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? No longer do we have to fall submissive to any other God, to any other ideology, 
to any other thought or future. Almighty God has secured us through the blood of His Son. This will happen suddenly, and it will happen without warning. The eastern sky shall be opened, and we shall see Him come in the clouds. For many, like a thief in the night, suddenly and without warning, there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. He is the only way. Today, if you will simply believe history, if you will simply believe the greatest history book that the world has ever known, more evidence, more eyewitness account, more proof text than any other treatise, if you will but believe his story and call upon the name of Jesus, God will forgive your sins today and he will save your soul. For this reason, I bow my knees to God, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, and by the way, love is the expression of God. It is not the expression of man. Love is the expression of God. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ask, according to the power that is at work in us. Now to Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God forbid that the church of the living Christ ever tell another story but his story. God forbid that the church of the living God ever lift up another testament but the testament of Jesus Christ. To him be glory in the church in all generations. As Jude proclaimed in verse 24, now to him who is able. What is God able to do? Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Now to him who is able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now to him who is able. The Apostle Paul and Jude both declared that there is one who is able, only one. 
there is one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask according to how much we will allow him to work in our lives. Now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling, unto him who is able to present us to God, to present us in his presence faultless, without blame, without blemish. Now to him who is able to clean us up, to work through our lives, and to bring us to God without any blemish, any spot, any blame. Now to him who is able, let there be glory to our God, to our Savior, who alone is wise. This is his story. The history of the world will never be written by any other words than these. When the final chapter closes and the end of this world gives way to a new heaven and a new earth, this word will be there. This word will stand forever. The love of God reaches out to you through His Word to this God, our Savior, who alone is wise. To Him be glory. To Him goes all glory. All glory to God. All credit, all glory, all praise, all virtue. Every good gift, every perfect gift, every breath of life, every joy we can embrace, all glory to God, all majesty to Him. There is no other God. There is no other Lord, no other Savior. There, there is none other. To Him belongs all dominion. To God belongs all power both now and forever now and forever today church i want to go on record as a church on record as a pastor on record as a believer on record as a man to say that there is no other God but Jehovah God. He alone is wise. Give the Lord a, a, an offering to His name. There is no other story. There is no other way. I refuse to seek solace in any other but Christ. It is His Word that gives me comfort. It is his story that gives me hope. It is the history of this world that grants me grace to believe in the future that God has planned. There is none other. Let me go on record today to say that this word is true. His story, one story. And for that you should be thankful, grateful, hopeful. Why would anyone hope that this is not true? Why would anyone hope that the eternal security of your soul was in question? Why would anyone hope that there is no God? How could anyone imagine with all of this history to God be the glory? His word is true. Seek no other. Today, 
if you will not harden your heart. But today, if you will open your heart, Almighty God will prove Himself to you. In that, He will save your soul. Never leave you, never forsake you, and never do you wrong. He will secure your eternity. You might say, I have questions. He will answer every one. In due time, you will know even as you are known. Forsake not the salvation which was offered to mankind, paid for by the blood of His Son. Just say yes and see what God will do. Today I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and consider who can save you? Who can save you? What can save you? Can money save you? Can position save you? Can more knowledge save you? Can some professor's ideology save you? Cannot believing in God save you? What can save you? Has anyone else promised to save you? To pay the price themselves? No. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. This world is but a short breath. God never asked that we be perfect, but He did ask that we give Him our lives and let Him be Lord. God will take you just as you are. And He will begin to build His kingdom in you. He'll do it right now. No one else can. Your friends can't. Your family can't. Only Jesus. Pray with me right now. Unto Him, the only wise God, he will save you from an eternity in hell. And He will also save you from the hell of this life. Wherever you are, lost, saved, unsure, insecure, wherever you are, pray this prayer with me and give your life to Christ. Let that new walk begin today. Let's pray. Father, just, just pray this with me. Almighty God, creator of the universe, I want to know you. Show yourself to me. I decide today that I am going to give you my life. Here, God, teach me. Reveal yourself to me. I accept things I cannot know without your wisdom. 
I believe in Jesus. I don't know why, but there is a haunting. There is a gnawing. There is enough of you in me for me to say, I do believe. I just don't know. I believe. Help my unbelief. Fill me up, God, with the things I am lacking. Change my life to be more like you. Teach me your way. I give you my life. Thank you, God, for your word. Now, Jesus, if you can use me, use me. Thank you. Amen. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask according to how much you will let God work in you. That's your next step. Let God work in you. Let God work in you. There's always something you can do to please Him. Won't you stand? Today, <laughs> I've been rather direct, I suppose. But today, I want to go on record telling you a part of my history. This Jesus saved my soul, changed my life, brought me out of darkness, and he put my feet up on solid ground. He gave me hope when I had no hope. He has proven himself to me over and over again. I have never been disappointed in him. He has never left me. He has never forsaken me. Although I have walked on my own path at times, he has always reached out and gently brought me back to him. My testimony that I stand ready to give is that he is a good God who loves me and has a plan for my life. And he loves you every bit as much as he loves me. Go into all the world Tell others his story. I commission you in the name of Jesus. Go and tell and see what God will do.